unusual. Uh, we're going to be discussing several things in our news broadcast today that clearly are, in some uh, people's opinions, they are conspiracy theories. Uh, in other people's opinions, these things are really real. These things are happening on the earth. But we're also going to be looking at this from a prophetic uh, standpoint, something that I discovered recently written in the book of Enoch, a book that, well, in some circles of Christianity and in Judaism, that the book of Enoch is not part of the Bible, but yet it's clearly part of the Ethiopic scriptures. It was even part of the Qumran community, where there's been many fragments, including an incomplete scroll of the book of Enoch that was discovered. So the Jewish people did accept the book of Enoch as an authoritative biblical scripture at one time. And in many Bibles, it still is there, including even the Etzefer that Dr. Stephen Pidgeon uh, has put out as well, where he put this book back in the Bible. Uh, so we're going to be looking at some things from there, and we're going to even be looking at some articles that have been considered... Um, uh, well, some might say it's fake news, some might say it's satire. Regardless of the case, there may be some very truth to it, and this is why I wanted to talk to you about these things. Uh, Antarctica has really become a major subject uh, in recent, uh, well, in fact, in the last year, even more so. There's been every kind of conspiracy theory that it is a place where a massive alien base, uh, this is where aliens go at. We know of the, uh, uh, one of the former military officers, Bird, who fought a conflict uh, near Antarctica and lost a lot of men claiming that there were flying discs, flying saucers coming out of the Antarctica. Uh, and just, all, there's all kinds of evidence that does, that is, legitimate evidence that clearly seems to uh, show that the Antarctica is certainly a base of some sort. Uh, the Germans also, under Adolf Hitler, had a base down at Antarctica. There's all kinds of things that are going on in this region of the world, and this year, uh, or actually last year, when the election, uh, John Kerry himself disappeared down to the Antarctica uh, during the very day of election. But what was really strange uh, is that when John Kerry went down there, he goes to New Zealand right afterwards, and there was a massive earthquake inside of New Zealand. I'm going to share with you, um, you can see some of the images here on this article here from the New York Times. They'll show you some of the images of the earthquake itself. 7.8 magnitude earthquake. The earthquake was very, very shallow, and in one article... Uh, that, that we saw that would probably be considered satire, that, uh, that they have written and stated that the reason why the earthquake happened was because John Kerry did a last-ditch effort and went down to Antarctica to try to meet with the, well, as they put it there, he was meeting with the Guardians. And the Guardians had rejected his plea to put Hillary Clinton in the White House, instead Donald Trump would become the next president of the United States. Now I realize that does, it sounds so far-fetched, sounds so crazy in fact, to even think of that. And then of course they said that the earthquake at New Zealand, uh, where he went immediately after the Antarctica visit, was a warning to him not to come back again. Well, that's what they also said in the article. Uh, those of you that remember, uh, here is a picture here of the Patriarch Kirill. Uh, Patriarch Kirill is also uh, the head of the Eastern Orthodox Church who went also to Antarctica on a very unexpected trip uh, after he met with Pope Francis in Cuba. Uh, and Pope Francis gave him a secret docu document, never was revealed exactly what was in the document, but it was the first time the two leaders of the both East and Western uh, Orthodox churches had met together to try to mend their relationship. He goes to South America afterwards, and then the unexpected trip to Antarctica. Well, the question is, why did he go to Antarctica? Well, in one article here, the Ark of Gabriel, Antarctica, Russia, and the Apocalypse, speaks about how that the Russian government had actually moved a mysterious ark that was discovered uh, at Mecca, uh, underneath the ground there, and was brought out Many people died in the process, uh, according to the article's claim here. 
and that Russia did a special movement of this art down to Antarctica. Now, again, whether we would say this is just a bunch of garbage or if it's really true or not, I'll just leave that up to you. But maybe what I'm going to share with you in a few minutes might weigh in on your thinking. So I do ask you, just kind of bear with me a little bit here while we discuss these things here. Um, anyway, at Mecca, if you remember, uh, I believe it was last year, there was a quote-unquote stampede. And the news reported that some 700, in one case, 717 people were killed in this stampede. This is something that has never happened before at Mecca, and actually we found out later that it was 2,000 people were killed there in Mecca, and an apparent stampede that killed all of these people. Well, not according to some of the articles there. In fact, as you can see, this crane here that is toppled, that what was actually going on at Mecca was an excavation of this strange ark called the Ark of Gabriel, that according to the uh, article here, this was something that Muhammad had said, uh, had prophesied about. And this was buried here beneath this very place. And they were working on trying to bring it out and some type of plasma release was done and it caused the death of all these people. Again, is this just conspiracy theories? Is it fabricated? Who really knows? But one thing that is a fact, though, is there was a Russian ship, a scientific ship, headed to Antarctica, and that ship did stop at the port there in Saudi Arabia, supposedly to take on supplies. Well, as you know, Saudi Arabia is not necessarily the greatest friend of Russia, but they did it anyway, right? So then after that, the ship goes to South Africa and then on to Antarctica. So they did stop and pick something up in Saudi Arabia. So maybe the article has got some truth in it after all. And then right after this ship goes to Antarctica, this is when Kirill suddenly goes down there to visit the one and only Eastern Orthodox Church at the Antarctica. So just too many strange things are happening. And a lot of people just write it off as conspiracy theories, you know, these things about aliens and, and you know, all this stuff going on in Antarctica. This is just a bunch of nonsense to begin with. Well, you know, I always kind of, I looked at these things and I think, wow, that's pretty interesting. I will tell you though, this article here that you're seeing now in English, um, this article did appear in the mainstream Russian media as well. We did a report on this back months ago, and I was trying to find the actual report I did on it. could not find it to save my life there, uh, but I wanted to share that with you. And if you look back, maybe you can find it yourself. But when we did the report on this, we used Russian media, mainstream Russian media, that does not look at this as being just a fabrication they actually reported it as real news and that yes, indeed, Russia did do a secret mission down to the Antarctica and had taken a thing called the Ark of Gabriel. So there is a Russian news source out there that does not look at this as some kind of conspiracy. And it went much deeper than what this article goes into it. We shared that with you once before. But then something caught my attention the other day. As you can see on your screen now, this is the Book of Enoch. I was reading in the first book of Enoch, chapter 18, and this is where the angel Uriel is taking uh, Enoch and showing him some very interesting things. And I'm gonna share with you some of the words that I read here in Enoch, and then you'll see why it became very interesting to me. If we go down to say verse four and begin there, it says, and I saw the winds which turned the sky and caused the disk of the sun and all the stars to set. And I saw the winds on the earth which support <clears throat> excuse me, the clouds, and I saw the path of the angels, I saw at the end of the earth the firmament of heaven above, and I went towards the south. Okay, so he goes to the end of the earth, and he speaks about going towards the south. And it was burning day and night, where there were seven mountains of precious stones, and three towards the east, and three towards the south. Now, I begin to think about this, He's talking about seven mountains, but three go to the east and three go to the south, and he's talking about going towards the south. 
And I'm thinking to myself, okay, and he's talking about it being that it burns, it burns day and night. It was burning day and night. In other words, the sun is not setting. And I'm thinking to myself, well, the South Pole, that describes the South Pole like no other place on earth. The sun just doesn't, it doesn't really ever set. It's always, you can, it's always daylight. And so it really caught my attention. But then he mentioned about the seven mountains. And of course, he talks about the stones, etc. But then he says, east and three go to the south. Well, that really got my attention. So I thought to myself, okay, is there a place uh, down at the Antarctica that would kind of match this type of description? Well, oddly enough, there is. It's Mount Vincent. Now, you have to keep in mind what you're looking at here on your screen. You have Mount Vincent right here. It is called the Seven Summit. There are three going south. Now, you would say these are three to the west. It's actually described as southeast and southwest. But keeping in mind, when Enoch went here, the earth had not been tilted off its axis. So therefore, north and south, east and west was a bit different, right? And if you take and tilt the earth back the way it would have been, this will go just like that. And then you would have the three peaks, as it speaks about here, and we have the summit here, three peaks here. Those would go down to the south, just as he describes, and these here, the three, would go to the east, just as he describes there. The seven mountains, the seven summits and three to the east and three to the south that really began to make sense but this, but the words here in enoch get a little bit more strange though and as i read on it says and those towards the east were of colored of stone and was of pearl and one of a healing stone and those towards the south of a red stone and the middle one reached to heaven like the throne of the lord and uh, stibium and the top of the throne was a sapphire and I saw a burning fire and what was in all the mountains. Now, keeping in mind, the middle one was the tall one. And of course, at Mount Vincent, that's exactly the way it is. Mount Vincent is the tallest mountain. Now, I can't say that this is conclusively correct. I'm just sitting, I'm putting this here before you as a conjecture, something for you to think about, just something that I find very fascinating in line with all these anomalies that are happening at Antarctica, all the weird things that are going on. Uh, John Kerry, I mean, gosh, he did more than one visit down to the Antarctica here. Why? What's going on? Now, I, when I first looked at this, I'm thinking Planet X. They're going down there because they can see Planet X coming. All right? And maybe that has something to do with it as well. But what about some other things? I'm going to share with you some very serious things that also that are going on down there that have been claimed by former military officers. Okay, so just hold on for a second here. It says, and I saw a place there beyond the great earth. There the waters gathered together. And I saw a deep chasm of the earth with pillars of heavenly fire and saw among them fiery pillars of heaven, which were falling as regards both height and depth. They were immeasurable. And beyond this chasm, I saw a place and it had neither the sky above it nor the foundation of earth below it. And there was no water on it and no birds but it was a desert place. Now, I'm sure now when you read this part here, well, that throws that out. Must have been out in Saudi Arabia somewhere. Maybe not. Maybe not, guys. Let's take a look at something else here that's very, very interesting. All right, let's go actually to the sevensummits.com website. And this is about Antarctica, and it's about Mount Vincent, and it talks about it being the tallest mountain, etc. Let me read to you the Antarctica facts, though. Besides the mountain summit, if you go down here to say about right up under the blue right here on your screen, the snowfall in Antarctica is so minimal that the continent has been called the world's coldest desert. The interior receives less than three centimeters, in other words, less than one inch of precipitation a year, making it the driest continent on Earth. The Antarctic dry valleys in Victoria land are among the driest places on Earth. Some scientists believe that no rain has fallen there for two million years. Astronauts have visited the dry valleys because of their similarity to lunar landscapes. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? 
They call it the coldest desert on earth. Well, maybe Enoch has got something when he said it was a desert. All right? As he called it, there was no water on it and no birds, but it was a desert place. Well, there are no birds. There are no penguins when you get that deep into Antarctica. There's just no life at all. And a terrible thing I saw there, seven stars like the great burning mountains and like a spirit questioned me. The angel said, this is the place of the end of heaven and earth. This is the prison for the stars of heaven and the host of heaven and the stars which roll over the fire. These are the ones which transgress the commandment of the Lord from the beginning of their rising because they did not come out at their proper times. And he was angry with them and bound them until the time of consummation of their sin in the year of mystery. And I, Uriel, we go into verse chapter 19 here real quick here, just the first verse, said to me, the spirits of the angels who were promiscuous with women will stand here. And they, assuming many forms, made men unclean and will lead men astray so that they sacrifice to demons as gods. Now, if you notice, that is a continuation. They're not dead. They're still there. And they do what? They will lead men astray so that they sacrifice to demons as gods. Wasn't that interesting? CERN not long ago where they sacrificed a young woman. Oh, they claimed it wasn't real, but found out later, according to Russian media, it was real. Russian media even was able to determine which woman it was that had been kidnapped. That was by not just so much the media, it was actually Russian intelligence officers that determined this information, but it was in Russian news, and we shared that with you here on Israeli News Live. So they sacrifice to demons as gods. They will stand there until the great day of judgment on which they will be judged so that an end will be made of them. But they still have very much access to men on this earth, and they are leading them astray, and they can trans they assuming many forms. That's pretty wild. I mean, I've never seen anything like this in my life. And the point is that I make here, when we look in chapter 18, it appears to be, and, and it could be completely somewhere else different on the earth, all right? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying this as a conjecture to you to consider this, uh, but it appears to be that Antarctica is that region that he's speaking of. For one, it has to be a place that's burning day and night. That sun is where they can see day and night. It seems to really match up, and that's what's really, really fascinating, in my opinion, there. And again, just like the mountains, if you were to take in, uh, into consideration the Andalusian destruction that tilted the Earth off its axis and put the Earth back right on its axis, and then look at the peaks here on, on the map in behind you here, then you would